Hello and welcome to Cosmic Sense. This is a Cosmic Sense update. UFO disclosure, it's hot, it's happening, it's now. Let's get into it. Yes, you've been ambushed. And some of the best advice I was ever given is how the ambush works. When you are ambushed, the last thing you do is run. If you run, you're done. What you do is you find a place, you hunker down, you assess the situation, and you make a plan. Let's have a snack now. We'll get friendly later. So what has been disclosed? I'm not exactly sure because I'm taping this prior to that moment. What, what, how did it come about? Is it President Obama, you know, standing next to an ET or by himself? Is it a mass event where the whole world is experiencing something and we're turning to our favorite media sources to tell us what happened? What's going on? Is it something more insidious? The reality is that disclosure has occurred and there's no going back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at some of the major categories within this ET alien equation and show you from my perspective where they are right now. Wouldn't we wanna ask someone who's been in space what's going on in space? So what is Edgar Mitchell saying right now? What is Gordon Cooper saying? And this saucer flew right over him and put down three little gear and landed out on the dry lake bed. And they went out, picked up their cameras and moved on out toward him filming. And he lifted off, put the gear back in the well and climbed out at a very high rate of speed and disappeared. At that point in time, there was no doubt in my mind that this vehicle was uh, made at some other place than here on Earth. And what I am suggesting is it is now time to put away this embargo of truth about the alien presence. And I call upon our government to open up. Not only that, what did Yuri Gagarin say? This is the first man in outer space in Russia. So now add to that footage that has been shot in recent shuttle missions. And you have very interesting sort of objects in outer space. What's going on and why all of a sudden does NASA automatically change the channel or close the aperture? Well, it's been alleged that this is a cover-up, that there are forces in the government that know about this but that don't want to share this information. Well, this appears to be the case. However, it's important to maybe differentiate between the people in the government who know and the people in the government who don't know. According to some sources, there are 10 to 15 levels of military top secret above the president. So the president of the United States may not know that much about this stuff. In fact, it seems that this mystery of what is exactly being covered up and by whom is still quite large. Now, there have been dozens and dozens of UFO researchers over decades upon decades. And what is it with their fashion sense? It's pretty extraordinary. You know, in our culture, we'd take you a lot more seriously if you dressed better. Also, there is a lot of bickering going on in the UFO community. One researcher says, this guy works for the government. One says, she works for the government. Blankety blankety blue blue. And so what's sad to me about the researchers is that now, <laughs> You've still got the same old suits, but we're not ever going to listen to you because now it's time for Busty McFoxness to come on the screen and with the credibility of her cleavage announce to the world 
that the UFO phenomenon is real. The craft in our sky that we call UFOs are demonstrating flight characteristics that we cannot duplicate with our current technology. We're talking about astounding feats, like traveling tens of thousands of miles an hour, stopping abruptly, starting abruptly, uh, changing direction at right angles at very high speeds. Now these movements would essentially turn the human body to mush inside these craft. So how are they actually getting around? One theory is that they have what's called an anti-gravity engine. Now this is not an engine like we imagine, combustion engine, for this engine may have virtually no moving parts. But what it's doing is either amplifying or de-amplifying gravitational waves, therefore attracting it or repelling it from larger gravitational bodies such as the Earth. The other theory is that these craft are propelled by thought. What? <laughs> I mean, really, what does this mean? Mind, consciousness, matter? This is absurd. Now, we're going to get deeper into extra dimensional issues in the main program of Cosmic Sense, but now just stretch your mind out to the idea that these craft, with the crystalline power source, are being propelled by thought. Now, these theories are really involving planetary travel. When we're talking about intergalactic travel, we're talking about something totally different. We're talking about a theory of collapsing space-time. So that you get in on one end, you collapse space-time, and you get off on the other. Now, is this caused by some kind of technology, or is it uh, taking advantage of existing portals in the universe, um, things that are referred to as wormholes in our science fiction? Now, personally, it's kind of sad for me to, uh, to think that our consciousness, our mass consciousness in this country is so dependent on what an anchor person reads off a teleprompter. Because all an anchor person has to do is tell us something and we believe it. We don't research it, we don't investigate it, and we certainly don't look into the things that they don't mention. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Ah! I can't believe you did this to me! Like, I mean, if there was anything real to this, uh, you know, phenomenon, they'd tell us. You know, what do they have to hide? One of the major events that occurred in the 90s was down in Mexico City. Now, this was July of 92, and there was a solar eclipse. And during the solar eclipse, hundreds of thousands of people around Mexico City, in Mexico City, witnessed disc-shaped objects in the sky. And in Mexico City, they have a version of 60 Minutes, and they have their version of a Dan Rather, let's say, and his name is Jaime Musan. Well, after this event, Jaime Musan did an entire show on these sightings, and the phone lines at his studio were shut down with so many calls. Now, he ended up receiving thousands of videotapes shooting these objects. We're not talking about five or ten, we're talking about thousands of videotapes. So there was a huge incident in Mexico City during that time, but we never heard a thing about it. This is pretty fascinating stuff. Yet there was no avenue open for this information to come to us. Hey, howdy there, Mr. Link. What is that? Barbecue? Now there's been horse mutilation, there's been sheep mutilation, uh, whatever the case, the facts of this are extraordinary. The cattle have been cut, there's parts of their faces removed, their butt is cored out, whatever it is, these cuts are bloodless. And under close examination, these cuts are made at over 200 degrees by some kind of, who knows what, some kind of laser saw. I don't even know what. There's also a tarry substance that's found on these animal mutilations. Now the ranchers and the people that experience this are not happy about it. They are losing investment in their uh, cattle, but also 
they're not receiving the adequate treatment from the local officials. I think the government knows a lot more than they're letting us know. And I think that they think that it would panic the people, um, have total chaos if the people knew what was going on. At this point in my research, I believe cattle mutilations had some connection to an ET experience. Yet, also, I can't discount the idea that there is a lot of report of human beings involved with these kind of events as well. The experiences reported by abductees, both positive and negative, are extremely diverse. However, there are some common elements to the story. A person is usually taken from a familiar place, either through a beam of light or sometimes levitated and floated, oftentimes through walls, which would imply some kind of a dimensional shift. They arrive at a craft and encounter otherworldly beings. In negative abductions, these beings experiment on them against their will. In positive encounters, there is usually an exchange of information and the abductee reports feeling very comfortable and loved in that space. Then they are returned, oftentimes with no conscious memory of the experience. They also have what's called missing time, a chunk of time which they cannot account for. These memories are often recovered through regressive hypnosis. In 1967, Betty and Barney Hill became one of the first big, publicly debated UFO abduction stories in this country's history. We tracked his plane wreckage down after our tractor beam crushed it. It crashed in an open section of southern Nebraska. If I remember my history, these things were being dismissed as weather balloons, sun dogs, explainable things, at least publicly, at least publicly. The 1947 alleged UFO crash in Roswell. Well, this is by far the biggest, uh, most popular piece of UFO lore in this country. So what exactly happened on that day? Well, it's really unclear because there is so much mud and so much, you know, disinformation associated with it. It's very hard to tell. Personally, I look towards Stanton Freeman's interview with Jesse Marcel, who was the head of intelligence at the Roswell Army Air Force Base during that event. And this is a man who also allegedly recovered uh, debris with the rancher Mac Brazel. Now, Jesse Marcel is very significant because not only was he involved in the incident, but he is the key image associated with debunking the Roswell UFO crash. They took pictures, of course. They had a whole flock of microphones there. They wanted me to, to they wanted some comments from me, but I wasn't at liberty to do that. So all I could do is keep a mouth shut. And General Ramey is the one who discussed or uh, told the, the, the newspapers I mean, the newsman, what it was, and to forget about it. It was nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, which we, we both knew differently. This is the head of intelligence for the only nuclear strike force in this country, and he doesn't know what a weather balloon looked like. In 2010, we have an enormous number of whistleblowers coming out uh, to relate information regarding the UFO and ET reality. Now these men and women are either of the military that have had direct experience and contacts, or they're people that work in the industrial sector and have worked uh, under military contracts. And both of them are kept quiet because the material that they work on is officially top secret. And for those who don't know, if you actually divulge top secret information, you not only can be tried for reason and jailed, but you will forfeit everything you have earned and everything you have yet to earn. So no big deal, you just lose everything. So now there's a guy, Stephen Greer, and he's heading up something called the Disclosure Project. And so what he's done is he's gathered, you know, two to 300 of these men and women who have told their stories to him and have now gone on record to say that we will, if we are given impunity by the Congress, we will give our stories to the public. We will come out and tell our piece. I'm willing to testify to the truth of all these matters that I've spoken about this in front of Congress under oath. Thank you.
Well, you'll find all the way back from Sumerian texts, uh, you know, championed by Zachariah Stitchin, and a whole bunch of other cultural references that have to say that the star beings are our relatives. And in fact, that they have had a hand in our genetic evolution. And it begs the question, what are our real relationships with extraterrestrial intelligence? Have we had relations with other beings? I've always wanted to make love with an alien. What? Will I ever see you again? I'll call you the next time I pass through your star system. <laughs> okay, okay. No, no. No, it's not going to be that scary, I don't think. But, you know, who knows what kind of beings we're going to run into. At this point, we're talking about researchers putting up 50 to 60 different ET races and species that are interacting with us, or have been, for who knows how long. And are these beings actually extra-dimensional, not just extraterrestrial? What does that exactly mean? And are we extra-dimensional beings? You know, what is really going on? We have a lot of people to meet and a lot to talk about. Oh, it's a big topic. And you know, the, the alien uh, UFO extraterrestrial equation has, has long been depicted in a variety of, of films. And you have the good ETs and you have the bad ones. Yet there's just this common distortion uh, that goes along with this phenomenon. And I'll bring up this example of Travis Walton and Fire in the Sky. Now, Travis Walton is a huge, huge abduction story in which uh, these 10 loggers were out in Arizona. Travis was abducted. I'm really going brief on this. And the other guys got in their truck and cruised away insanely uh, to get away from some craft. And Travis has this experience. These other buddies of his, since he was missing for, I believe, two days, they were held on suspicion of murder. They actually thought that they killed him. Then he shows up a couple days later and he tells his story. And what's compelling about this film portrayal is the disparity between the images that he had his friend draw of his actual experience and the way Hollywood portrays it. Is it any surprise that they would have to sort of make them evil? You know, things get a lot more mysterious and hard to figure out if these beings aren't just cut and dried, dark, dark and dark. All right, welcome to the Cosmic Conversation regarding the UFO disclosure issue. I'm sitting here with Travis Daniels and we're going to discuss a few of the uh, ideas I threw down in the previous segment. Travis, what uh, what are you thinking about nowadays here? I think because of the event, we've leveled the playing field. Whether you're Republican, Christian, Protestant, Jew, Muslim, third world country, richest industrial country in the world, now we are truly earthlings. Mm. And we're one, and we're all on the same team, and you know, whatever happens on the field, we're all friends in the locker room now, you know? Well, um, I'd like to think that that's how people will react to everything you thought and everything you were taught, everything you've learned and bowed down to and got on your knees and everything you think is is now out the window. It's crazy. It's a relearning, like a 24 hour relearning today. And, you know, crash course. We all know it from our experiences in college or school or anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Or your first day of Burger King, like, you know, trial under fire, just boom, get in there and figure it out. Well, I think we have to have that attitude of like, let's get in there and figure it out. We don't know anything. Let's learn it as fast as we can and as, and as uh, tactfully as, you know, as compassionately as we can. So Travis, what do you think 
Like, let's crystal ball it. What is the big news in UFO disclosure? Like, what is the piece of news that is going to rock the world today? Mm. Is mm. it just that they exist? Now, you know what? I think everybody's got that. I think a five-year-old kid's got that from movies and, you know. So I don't know. The big shocker, I guess the big shocker would be we made a deal. We made a deal with these guys years ago. And guess what? It's time for the contract to come up. And I'm sorry to tell you the deal. It wasn't very good. It was, you can take Sally, Jim, and, and Cornwallis over there and abduct them and do some stuff with them. And we're sorry we made that deal, but deal's up. Do you think they actually came out and said that they have something to do with our history? Or do you think they're trying to? I, th I think many cultures said that. Well, no, I mean, do you think like this disclosure event, how big is this going to be? I mean, are, are we going to get deep into all that? Or do you think they're going to be like, they just showed up? Hmm, what a great question. You know, of course they're going to be, they just showed up. Well, you think so? To a lot, yeah, yeah. To the masses, probably they, they just showed up. No one warned me. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people in our generation, too, didn't necessarily have this arrogance that uh, that they were alone in the universe, but I certainly get the impression that they have this arrogance that they would have known. Yeah, no, I see that. You know? Mm -hmm. I guess at this point, Travis, uh, it would seem pretty obvious to me that, that we don't really know what disclosure is going to be like, and we don't really uh, have any sense of whether it's going to be a positive or a negative experience. No. It, surely it couldn't be positive. Well, why not? <laughs> He's been voted one of the best country singers of the decade and been awarded Entertainer of the Year three times. Travis Daniels. Hands Cool Records presents Travis Daniels in a special two album collection. You'll get all his best known hits. Travis Daniels. All your favorite songs. Two great albums, but it's not in stores. Please order yours today by calling. Well, here it is. Boom, bang, bing, boom, bang, boom. The world is over. Everything's done. What happened? What happened? I mean, come on. I used to care about my abs. Now I don't care as much. It's like I've lost a friend. How am I gonna deal with this? Yeah, I know, I feel the same way. I, I used to love my cigarettes so much, but now, what do they mean? Not as much. Not as much. I guess what I wanna know first off is, what do you want? I mean, did you come here to shake my hand and say, hey, we're neighbors? Or did you deplete all the resources on your planet and now you just want to come here and rape mine, you know. Um, what do you want? What do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? And can I help you with that? Or are you going to crush me to get that, you mm -hmm. know? Because mm -hmm. I'd love to help you with that if it's something I can help you with. Right, so you're going to be, you're going to be looking out into this um, day with that question of what do you want from us, right? Yeah, oh yeah. And so that's actually going to be really relevant if... Um, if it's either sort of an arrival and an enlightenment or whether it's an invasion or attack yeah. or a faked invasion or attack, mind you. Um, what are some other things? Um, you know, what can we learn from each other would be great. Um, tell, me how you're, tell me your creation story. I'll tell you my creation story. What if, what if they were the same? Mm. What if they were totally different? Mm -hmm. What if they tied in somehow? That would be intriguing. Okay, so here's the next big thing. It's like, how do people deal with a change like this? 
comes up from below your feet. You know, it changes the world under your feet. Yeah, what do you, um, what did you say when, when that D-Day came where they said, hey, the world is not flat, it's round. What did you tell your family that day? Good question. You know, we have a cool word in the English language. You'll hear this word when your child is 18 years old and when they're probably, you know, in their mid 20s. And that word is commencement. And the word commencement means, it really, what it really, what it means is to see an end of a one thing and a rebirth, a beginning of another thing. And so may we commence today and have commencement on a new path. Let's commence the commencement. Hey, let's commence the commencement. What's a, what's a good way to commence the commencement? We should like rock out some new modern space age music. Oh man. Could you imagine that? Wait, wait. Yes. See you next time everybody. Stay tuned. Cosmic Sense. Later. <laughs>